What's up guys, this is FoEdit or FoTK and this is a tutorial on how I made my official 2015 intro which you've probably seen on my channel. If you haven't, um, please go and check that video out now. Um, I'm going to run through basically how I made it. So, you know, in the relevant... It's quite an easy tutorial actually, to be fair. So as you can see here, the spheres fall into place uh, to form my logo. Uh, there's different size spheres, so I'm going to show you how to do all that and all that good stuff. So. Let's get straight into it. First of all, we need a logo, something to use as reference for our spheres. Um, so basically, you need to open up Photoshop and you need to craw, well, you need to draw out a logo. And I'm going to use TK for, for this tutorial. So I'm going to drag in my TK logo, just add a color overlay onto it. It's going to be a slightly thicker TK logo than the original, but um, it doesn't matter. And what you want to do is you want to use the pen tool and you just want to go around your whole shape uh, to form a work path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the one corner and then hold shift to create another straight line and click here. Unfortunately, you can't use shift for any diagonal lines, only up uh, top to bottom, left to right lines you'll be able to use shift for. And that just ensures that the line is completely straight. So I'm going to now click that one and this one, hold shift, then click that one. Then click that one, hold shift, click that one, and so on and so on. So all the the straight lines can be held down with shift. And the diagonal ones can't, I'm afraid. So now we have our work path. We can go to File, Export, and then go to Paths to Illustrator. Make sure work path is selected, click OK, and rename that whatever you want, or you know, and put it wherever you want, and then click Save. And once you've done that, you do not need Photoshop anymore, so that's fine. But you will need to drag this new file into Cinema 4D. There we are, so we have a TK logo. However, it's only a spline at the moment. Um, we're going to make that 3D, so if you want to come up here to Extrude Nerves, um, pop the spline into the Extrude Nerves, so making um, the Extrude Nerves the parent and the spline the child. Uh, so now, basically, it's 3D, and you can adjust how thick you want it. This will be quite important for how you know how much spheres you want, how thick you want it to be, or how dense you want it to be, shall I say? Um, I'm going to go for something like this, um, just roughly. That'll be good enough. Um, and then we can just click on the extreme nerves, make the object editable by clicking this or C, C for cats. And then we can right click, select children, that's important because you're going to need to select the caps as well. And you can right click and connect and delete. So that's just now one mesh. And that is our logo, so I'm just going to rename that. So logo. And we need to now get our uh, emitter. So we go to simulate, you go to particles and emitter. So now we've got the emitter sorted, we need to find something for the emitter to emit. Um, and as you can see from my intro, I used a sphere. So if you can pop one of those in. Make this, you know, the spheres, you know, the size you want. I usually go to five. However, all this can be adjusted later on, so no big worry yet. Um, I'll start off relatively medium smallish just to see what it looks like. Um, so there we go. Don't worry, worry about segments. We've got our sphere, and you can make that a child of the emitter. Uh, and then you probably play through, and nothing will happen. You still get these white lines. In order to make the emitter emit the sphere, you click on the emitter and you go show objects and then they turn into the spheres. So it's nice and easy. And as you can see, they are moving away from us. They're moving along the Z axis. Um, what I want to do is I want them to drop down and then fill up the TK logo. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. So that'll be minus, uh, minus 90. There we go. And I just want to move that above the TK logo there just so it's on top and then what I want to do is I want to make the emitter the size of the TK logo as well so if I come to top view um, I can come onto the emitter and go to the emitter tab and adjust the X and Y to make sure that fits although I'll only do it slightly smaller so it fits inside and I'll show you why in a minute there we go so now we've got our thing in place, we can click play and we can see that they're heading in the right direction. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to make these spheres drop freely. And 
what you need to do is you need to right click, go to simulation tags and go to rigid body. And it allows all of these to drop, uh, you know, by gravity basically. Um, so if I now click that and click play, you can see the actual thing drop in itself. The emitter, which we don't want, we just want the spheres. So what you want to do is you want to click on the emitter, uh, sorry, the dynamic tag, the rigid body. And you need to go to individual elements and you go, all, sorry, you go all. I can't even get the word out now. And once you've done that, you can click play and they drop freely, but your emitter doesn't, which is what we want. However, they're falling straight through our TK logo. So what we want to do is we want to make that a collider body. So we right click, go to simulation tags and collider body. Oh, there it is. Oh, I lost it for a minute. And um, basically that ensures that the rigid bodies will not pass through this. As you can see, they're now just dropping on top of the actual mesh, which is good. Brilliant start. And now what we want to do is we want to make it fill. Uh, easy way. Very easy. Just click on the dynamic body tag and go to shape. Instead of automatic, go to static mesh. There we go. And that what is not going to do anything. Nope, because I've forgotten something. Nothing big, no biggie. You click on the rigid body. And where it says collision and it says inherit tag and um, individual elements, the inherit tag has to say apply to ta sorry, apply tag to children. Um, uh, cause I, I don't know why. That just You have to do that. Um, basically, it's applying this tag to the child, which is sphere. So, yeah. Uh, and then basically you can you can carry on playing um, but it's not going to do anything it's just going to fall on top so that's why we need to move our emitter just inside our logo and it's I think we can do is sizing it down a bit actually so go to the emitter, emitter tab and bring the X down a bit and move it to the left there we go that's fine so now the emitter is inside of our uh, our logo and what we can do is we can now hide the logo because our collision tag is set to a static mesh and our rigid body applies the spheres and all that kind of good stuff you can click play and our spheres will take form to the TK logo um, obviously you can either extend the time so I can go to 200 frames and just let it play out until it finally fills up that's going to take a lot of time up. You can either come into the spheres, individual sphere, size them up. Um, I usually, you know, I'm going to make them a bit bigger. I'm going to make them, yeah, we'll go for 10. And the emitter as well, you can go to particle. And where I mentioned earlier that they're different sizes, you can come to uh, end scale and go to variation. I usually set up to 50%. Um, so when I come to play now I've got little little ones and big ones and it just looks a lot nicer as well and the emitter can also you know emit more particles than the ones you got so the birth rate editor and renderer you can bump those up as well so maybe do 30 um, just keep these two the same because whatever the editor is what you see in front of you um, and the renderer is what you see when it renders so you can actually do 50 here but render only 30 but you know just to make it easy to keep them the same and I can now just play and let it plan out. All right, I'm going to need a bit more particles then, aren't I? Because um, the stop emission ends at 150. So if I bang that up to 500, but really whack these up, the birth rate editors, if I get those up to 50, it will obviously fill quicker. And the more that goes in, you know, obviously, the slower the CPU will go. So as you can see, they are starting to build the TK logo, which is this reference. You know, and you can carry on going. And, you know, you can adjust various settings for how quick you want it and all that good stuff, you know. And you can add textures and all that, you know. Uh, you know, do all that stuff to finish it off. Render it out. Uh, I'd advise using global illumination on this render because it looks a lot nicer, especially with loads of shapes. Um, and especially ambient occlusion and you can find those in the effects tabs here so there it is guys uh, please like and comment if you haven't looked at the intro please go and do that now uh, that'd be great hit some views up and i'll see you in the next video peace